back to your career, you're racing at Hattori. Um, you ran there three years? Three years, yeah. And so, are you getting opportunities, calls from other teams? I was. Who? Uh, so, during 2019 season, RCR um, gave me a call. So, they actually, they gave me a call. Austin Craven gave me a call and told me that uh, Colleg wanted to talk to you, Colleg Racing. Because they're, they're, they got a connection, right? Right. So, we talk, we talk a little bit that year didn't really go nowhere and then 2020 comes did you want it to um yeah no i did i I just we didn't have the the funding at the time we didn't have the funding to go to rcr we didn't have the funding to call like Mm -hmm. we just we were barely making ends meet doing what we were doing in the truck level so during the 2020 season uh towards the end of the year i went and sat down with chris rice and and we talked about going into 2021 being being you know, with college racing and being in the Xfinity series and the deal could have been done. Um, and I ended up actually calling, uh, Jack Irvin with Toyota and letting him know that, Hey, I'm thinking about going and doing, doing this deal on the Xfinity side. And, and that's because is, uh, Hattori's a Toyota. Yeah. To Hattori, Hattori is so uh, a Toyota. So I'm like, you know, I, I'm not the type of person that ever wants to burn a bridge. I want to always keep the door open. You never know when you're going to cross that bridge again. So I've always just been that type of guy. And so I call, you know, Jack Irvin first and start talking to him. And I'm like, Hey, I'm thinking about letting the team know here in the next week or so that I am thinking about making a change. And he's like, well, I really want to keep you. Like, I want you to be at Toyota. I want you to be, if if you are okay with being a Matt Crafton of the truck series, I, I want you to be that guy. And I'm like, well, you know, let me let me think about this a little bit. And, you know, we go back and forth and there's some offers thrown at me and things like that. And ultimately I made the decision. I'm like, this is this could be a good deal. Like I, I can race twenty three, twenty four races a year. I can spend a lot of time with my family. I'd have a lot more time to spend at home with the family and, and I was really that was weighing on me a lot was like I'm going to have a lot more time to, to spend with the kids. And we all made it kind of work out for 2021 to, to stay at Toyota. And at that point, my mindset was, is I'm going to, I'm going to race in the truck series. Like there, I was just, I was, I've always wanted to make it to the cup level. It's not like I didn't, but I was like, I'm okay with this. Like I'm, I'm to the, to the age now that it it's not going to be something like, well, what could have happened? Right. And so during the 2021 season, we run the season, have a successful year. And towards the end of that year, um, Shigi Hattori, the owner of HRE, he is having some trouble with his sponsors from Japan and things like that. And and they kind of let us know like, hey, the the price is going to have to go up. Like we're not going to be able to keep doing this. Well, we didn't really have the money to, to, you know, give out any more than what we already had. Um, And... So during the end of, towards the end of 2021, we get to talking with, I end up calling uh, Austin Craven up cold column and I'm like, Hey man, uh, I know I had told you about, you know, this whole Toyota deal and that I'm going to stay with Toyota for a long time and that we have a long-term contract, this or that. I'm like, I, I think that we need to have a talk. And at the time he's like, well, we, we already have all of our stuff booked. Like all, all of our cars are, you know, signed for this and and they were talking about the 21 car was in the works for another driver taking that ride that there was something with wording and things like that 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 had to get changed but that it was basically a done deal i'm like man all right well we start looking around different places that where what are we going to do like where are we going to run we knew we didn't didn't have the money to go run back at hre with what they were wanting us to bring and he ends up calling me a few days later. Craven does. He's like, Hey, you haven't done anything, right? I'm like, yeah, no, I haven't. And he's like, um, come talk to me. He's like, we, we're having something go down with the 21 car. It might end up being open. I'm like, okay. So we go and talk to him and, um, somehow made the deal work. I mean, when we come into the program at the end of 2021, going into 2022, we didn't have full funding. Like yeah. we didn't have the funding to run the full season. We didn't have full funding. And uh, we went to work. Uh, Austin Craven and I, uh, he's he's my manager now. We we go to work. We start talking about, you know, what are we going to do sponsorship-wise. And we get to talking to my dad and, you know, thinking what B2B deals can we do. And that's where Bennett 
came along, uh, been at Transportation Logistics, and we go and talk to them. They're they're based out of Atlanta, Georgia, so they're not far from from where I grew up. And we get to talking, and my dad, he's always with you know freight and everything that goes out with the steel. He's always just used whoever the lowest bidder is, and he just kind of sends it out that way. Well, he ends up talking to Bennett, and we work out a deal with them, a B two B deal where. Now he does all of his freight, all of every, all of his steel, everything goes straight through Brent Bennett because they use their their flatbed trucking and everything, and they they send it all out, and that's how that's how the whole Bennett deal came came together uh, was a B two B deal with, with my dad and them, and and that's what kind of merged the gap on us making it work uh, for twenty two and and now this year in twenty three, um, so we are we're fully funded these last two years, which has been and great. I mean, my dad has spent you know, a lot of his hard earned money to get me to where I'm at. And now I can, you know, sit here and say that we are fully funded, which is a great thing that that's kind of taken some weight off my shoulders. Cause I've always told my dad, like, don't, don't put yourself in a bind. Like right. I, I'm not that type of, not that type of, uh, son or driver or whatever, where, you know, you just want your, your dad to keep flipping the bill. Like I, I wanted, I wanted him to see, a path to where he didn't have to bring no more money to the table. Like we wanted, that's, that's, that was our ultimate goal. Like yeah. don't, don't, we don't want my dad to be spending the money, um, any more than he has to. And now I can sit here and say that we're fully funded and it's, it's a great feeling. Mm-hmm.